Hello, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, and we are in Swordland. Our economy is in the tank, but things are looking better for President Anton Rain. Uh, we are almost to the uh, needed uh, vote tally for the constitutional reforms. I think we should get that. Um, may have to call from call on uh, forces from outside of our party to help us out with that. But I think in the long run, both in terms of uh, our playthrough here and the future of Swordland, moving away from the old guard of my party is going to be a good thing. Uh, right now, like I said, our economy is in the tank. And uh, we have to deal with that. So uh, let's see what we can do with our economy. The team gathered in Holsword at the Ministry of Economy to conduct an economic overview meeting to go over the current situation. The building was constructed in 1892 by Heron Walt, one of the, if not the most, famous architect in Swordland. The building looks simple and elegant with a few of his signature domes spread out over the roof. Walking through the large bronze doors at the entrance, I was led by two assistants upstairs into a meeting room. Everyone stood up as I entered the room, buttoning their suit jackets. That's a lot of people. <clears throat> Simon Hall, who is my Minister of Economy, Gus Manger, who is the Minister of Rural Development. Uh, Mikhail Avon, who I've never actually seen before. He's the co-chairman of NBC. Uh, David Wissey is my Minister of Foreign Affairs. And Edith Agnock is the chairman of CBS. Okay, welcome, Mr. President. <clears throat> it's good to be here. Everyone took their seats. As you all know, today we go over our economic status. Let's begin without any further ado. The aid we have received from Marquesia has helped us out tremendously. Personally, I think it was a great decision, Mr. President. We will use the majority of the capital to combat the recession. I would expect nothing less from our Arcasian friends. I had to do whatever it takes to end the recession, even if it meant a deal with Arcasia, and let's hope this decision won't come back to haunt us later on. Um, now, if you're new to the game here, it's a uh, text-based political simulator. Obviously, uh, each of these choices you are offered leads down a different path, kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure type of deal. Um, you could drastically alter the course of the game by picking one or any of these. So, uh, we have to make our choices carefully because there is no option to save and reload. Uh, the game saves as you go. So we will pick... Uh, let's hope this decision won't come back to haunt us later on because that's kind of my thinking as well. I don't think that will be the case. Arcasians are known for their fair business. How are we doing in terms of the infrastructure? The success of the first infrastructure project is already showing a positive effect on the economy. Our first infrastructure project was the H3 or the H1 highway project. Um, we kind of sold that through bribery to uh, the Underhaul Construction Corporation, but they did a pretty good job. So, uh, Mikhail started grinning as he leaned forward. Thanks to the highway, economic growth is returning to Agnaland. We are expecting new investments and jobs in the region. Many leaders on the Business Council have praised the logistical approval improvements. It was a gargantuan effort from our side of the Ministry of Economy. Uh, your efforts are noted. Everyone who has contributed is greatly appreciated. Uh, positive results show us that we are on the right path towards economic growth, or we can do much more to improve the economy, and we will because our work is far from over. Uh, we are on the right track going forward. People are already speaking of the positive turn. You can see the reactions in society. Oh, good. Let's hear the stats on our deal with Whalen. Our trade deal with Whalen. Okay, a little backstory. Uh, we had a choice between uh, a trade deal with either Whalen 
or with uh, Agnolia up here. Agnolia was not happy with our immigration policy, so they basically sent us on our way empty-handed, so we had to take our second choice, Waylon. But it could turn out to uh, benefit us in the long run. Our trade deal with Waylon has increased our imports and exports by 60% in one month, which is considerably a good number. It is. Uh, it was a dangerous gamble, but I, starting to pay off. I'm going to go with that one because um, we had to make certain concessions about their distaste for the bloods and well we agreed to kind of in a back channel kind of way help them out the pay off is high yes but so is the risk our support for their military operations was questionable regardless the numbers are clear I must say I still can't get behind a trade deal with Wayland especially when it involves a military cooperation I feel like we have made a contract with the devil. The devil? <laughs> Victor Smolenek is not a bad man. He was an absolute obnoxious douchebag. <clears throat> but that's beside the point. Uh, we are reaping the benefits. We will come up... Come, We will come on top here. Okay. Well, <laughs> what's done is done, so shut your mouth. I hope it was the right decision. Uh, we are reaping the benefits. What I'm worried about is not only about Wayland, it's the other countries too. Increased trade has improved our economy. I see this as a reason for celebration. On a side note, consumer spending has decreased further due to the pessimistic, pessimistic mood caused by the issues with our economy. Uh, that is discouraging as we did our best, we did the best we could thus far, or I am confident we will turn this mood around in adaptive projects with adaptive projects and solutions. Good to hear. Positive attitude all the time. That's Anton Rain. While I agree that our first attempts were not successful, we still might have economic opportunities left. It isn't good for our reputation as the people expect quick solutions. We are running out of time. Simon checked his large dossier. Some good news. We currently have a budget surplus. That's fantastic. That means we can pursue many investments which would drive our <laughs> drive our economic or our economy upwards, so we're going to be spending our budget and going back into the hole. I th that's the gist of what I'm getting from him. <clears throat> I will present you with draft documents of economic expansion soon. Very well, I will take a look. No matter the cost, we will have to increase our economic development rates. Otherwise, I'm sad to say that we will be doomed. We need to use the opportunities we are shown. Trade deals and infrastructure improvements always help. Uh, Mr. President, I will be very clear. Simon took off his glasses and put them on the table. He looked at me straight in the eye. You already know this, and I don't want to frighten you, but... If we are unable to stop this recession, we are heading towards an economic catastrophe that has never been seen before in Swordland. Or all of Eastern Mercopa, apparently. I can't even begin to imagine how we could survive that. None of us wants to see Swordish people starve while the state is unable to provide for its citizens. Um, then we need to get to work. Exactly. Now, there are a few methods to tackle the recession. Our surpluses in the is a great reason to spend extra on a new investment project to push for further economic development in the future. I've prepared a few project proposals. There are two main distinctions in between these projects. It's either about continuing our infrastructure improvements or investing in increasing production. If we continue our infrastructure, that would lift us up to advanced country levels. However, our industrial production suffered and also needs a boost to return to pre-recession levels. There is, of course, the option to not take any risk related to our budget, says Edith Agnock. The plans for these projects will soon be finalized. For now, I can provide preliminary, preliminary information. Which one would you like to hear first? Uh, let's hear about the production. 
For production, we have two projects. One is the Sarna Agricultural Zone, and the other is the Conria Industrial City. I see the Sarna Agricultural Zone investment as a higher priority due to the fact that farmers in Bergia were the most hit by the recession. Sarna is also also is a much poorer city than Conria, so he's in favor of the agricultural. Uh, Conria Industrial City project has the potential to increase manufacturing in the greater Holstord region by a large amount. <coughs> Uh, Sarna is a much poorer city indeed. It deserves my, any investment it can get from the government. Conrad would benefit from a larger manufacturing industry. It would bring the city to a position where it could rival Lockhaven. Uh, well, this is a for the people playthrough, and if. Let's see, Sarna and agricultural zone investment is a high priority due to the fact the farmers in Bergia were most hit. So we're gonna go with uh we're gonna go with the Sarna Agricultural Zone. The recession has hit the farmers of Sarma, Sarna particularly hard. Besides the agricultural output would increase increase would boost our economy. The investment won't be able to recover the industry there. Conria, on the other hand, would bring my more financial gain. Our government has the opportunity to support agriculture and we should take it. It would increase our exports too, so it's looking like my advisors are lining up for the um the agricultural product uh project. But let's hear about the uh, infrastructure project. For infrastructure, we have two projects. One is the Benfi International Airport, and the other is the Morna Port. Benfi is growing at a rapid pace and would benefit highly from an international airport. Much more money to be made there, too. The Morna Port will boost trade and improve the flow of goods towards Holsord, because the Conriat Port is too small in capacity, and extension is blocked by the Navy headquarters. Um, I'm going to go with the port. Uh, we seem to be doing fairly well with import export uh, capacity, so we're going to lean towards the uh, port in Morna. I don't think investing in Morna with a port would do much to change our economic prospects. Goods are flowing from other places just as fast. That's a good point, I guess. Increased exports and imports on a more accessible path to Holsord is very lucrative in my opinion. Time is money. I agree with Edith. The Morna port will mean a great deal to our trade and improve the economy of the Loren region too. All right, had enough information. It covers our subject for today. Uh, anybody want to add anything? Nobody answered. Okay, that concludes the meeting. Have a good day, all. Goodbye. All right, so everyone's saying goodbye, and the meeting ends. Now, I did notice that we have some business to attend to up here. Uh, Vogslandian presence and well, the these uh, Agnolians here they're kind of at odds with Vogsland over here over this island. Um, we'll read the report. Prime Minister Van Horten warned us about the increasing naval presence of Vogsland in the Markian Sea. He showed it his wishes to have a stronger naval cooperation with Swordland in the future. He already stiffed us once. General elections held in Agnolia this week had resulted in the victory of the Nurist Democratic Union of Agnolia for the second time with its leader Martin Van Horten continuing his duties as Prime Minister. Okay. Uh, a couple reports to read over here in Uzirin. Polio cases discovered in rural Uzirin. Reports from our border cities indicate that the polio outbreak in Wayland 
has been moving towards Swordland. Specifically, there has been a sharp increase in cases in rural Ozirin and nearby villages. Health professionals have been dispatched to curb the infections by quarantining the patients. There are currently 23 active cases in Swordland, so polio is on its way here. That's great. Pro, pro, -blutic, ah, pro -blutish protest. Governor of Bergia, Felix Braun, reports that a large group of students gathered in protests in downtown Dyer, disrupting traffic and acting violently. The police immediately reacted and the situation was brought under control. All right. Well, look at all the newspaper articles we have to read. See anything else? Let's take a look at the news. Uh, Wayland border reinforcements announced. As Wayland begins the Operation Bear Trap against BFF targets, Maroon Palace has reiterated the commitment to defend our Wayland border against any threats and announced new reinforcements to the border. The palace announced that the Swordish Armed Forces are working in close cooperation with the Wezek Armed Forces. As part of the mobilization order, General Vulcan has made comments saying Swordish Armed Forces, as always, stand vigilant against any threats inside and outside of our borders. We will not allow any terrorists to waltz into Swordland. And the housewife's march to defend Swordish tradition in Anrica. <coughs> As the Swordish League of Women spearheaded a march for so-called education equality in Enrica, a group of self-proclaimed happy housewives led a counter-protest. Their argument is that pulling girls out of handicraft classes, that's like home economics, where they learn to cook and do other home economic-y type things. Um, my wife is on board with uh, progress to the future and all that, so... I'm sure you can guess where I'm headed with this. Protesters brutally beaten by police, says the radical. As if we need more evidence of Anton Rain's hateful campaign against the Bluish people, four student protesters in Dyer were savagely beaten by police officers as they attempted to demonstrate against the administration's anti bluish policies. And Rain, that's me, closes doors to refugees from Waylon. Uh, the bloodthirsty dictator Victor Smolak has begun his operation against the Bluish Freedom Front in northern Wayland. The operation's name, Operation Bear Trap. Okay. Maroon Palace gave its support to the operation and stated that the Swordish border guards will be in close contact with the Wezek Armed Forces. We already know all this. Uh, Smolak has already ordered the bombing on civilian schools and hospitals, calling them breeding grounds for terrorists. President Reign's response to close our border to prevent any stragglers from coming into Swordland is troubling. Or he is forgetting something. Not all stragglers from this war will be armed militants. Ooh. And the Geopolitico. More news about Operation Bear, Bear Trap. Uh, Watchtower of Human Rights said that they will be following the developments closely for any infractions on human rights violations. Amid spiking tension, tensions with Agnolia, Vogue's land increases naval presence. The report from Eastern Mercopa show two Vogue's Landian aircraft carriers are patrolling the Markian Sea around Helgeland Island. A massive show of naval force amid spiking tensions with Agnolia. Stallport could interpret, interpret it as provocation in the region, says experts on the region. Swordland's diplomacy disappoints. Oh boy. The new diplomatic initiative presented by the foreign minister has led to major disappointment when President Rain went to Stallport only to come back empty handed. The meeting with Prime Minister Horton seemed to have gone negatively, diminishing the chances for closer ties between the two countries. In a time when Swordland needs more allies, this comes as news of a sorrow. Blah blah blah. I'm sure we'll be just fine. Okay, what do we have to do here? Uh, let's read the reports from Whole Sword. Ministry of Education has reported that the privatization efforts for education has been going well and that they are on track to meet targets. The capital received from the privatized schools and competing private investors 
has already shown results in the form of new schools and improved quality of education in most major cities. So our privatization of the schools is doing uh, wonders for our budget and our people. Good. At least that's how I'm going to interpret that. You can choose to interpret it however you want, but I'm trying to stay positive here. Uh, all right. Let's uh, take a look at some of these investment projects. Uh, the Minister of Economy has put forward four bold plans for investment projects, with each aiming to solve different issues ranging from production to infrastructure. The four available investments are Benfi Infern International, Morna Seaport, Conrad Industrial Zone, and Sarna Agricultural Zone. This will be negative two on our government budget, which will bring us back down into the negatives. Uh... I think we need to uh, take the hit. Oh. I thought I was going to get to pick more than one. Like, either the airport or the port. Or a choice between the industrial zone and the agricultural zone. I'm going to go with the port. And there goes uh, budget into the negatives. So we went with another infrastructure project. Uh, we are constructing a port in Morna, which is right here. Okay. Now what? Budget allocation of healthcare. Oh boy. What budget? They did. They always seem to ask me to allocate budget would when I just go into the negative so I think we're about to go even further into the negative <clears throat> I was having my afternoon tea in my office and going through newspapers one of the headlines piqued my interest it read polio crisis in Whalen before I could start reading I heard a couple of knocks Pascal entered followed by Lucian Pascal is a minister of health Mr. President, it's time for the scheduled health care meeting. Hello. Take your seats. They have taken their seats and Pascal produced documents from his suitcase. He put them on the table. Pascal looked at the newspaper I was reading. Very troubling news from Whalen, Mr. President. I was just returning from a meeting with our top scientist on the matter of polio. It seems to be spreading. Uh... What are we doing to prepare? We have notified all of our healthcare staff, especially the ones closer to the Wayland border. Unfortunately, these are also more rural areas where we lack equipment and staff. What I was told by our researchers was that with the current infection rate, there will soon be millions of people affected by polio. We need to be ready for any possibility. Uh, Lucian Galad, my chief of staff, says I doubt it is that serious yet. Regardless, back to the topic. Pascal put on his reading glasses and went through the documents. He didn't say anything for a whole minute. Uh, Mr. Benoit? Yes, yes, of course, let's start. He put the papers down, cleared his throat, and looked at me. In general, the ministry is somewhat content with the budget decision that was made. At least we didn't get a cut. But I'm still happy that the administration continues to support health care at the same level as before, though this limits our options significantly. Uh, choices. Our healthcare service seem to be working fine and don't require more investment. I'm sure we can improve what we have. Uh, we will have to make do with what we have. I want you to lead the way to solutions in healthcare, or it was not a decision I made lightly. Uh, we're going to have to make do with what we have. I don't see many ways out of this particular situation. We need funds to bring improvements. As you know, I have been preparing a new privatization program that would create funds through selling of unused ministry property and some extra taxes. It might not go against our strategy to promote a market economy, but I'm personally against privatization of government services. Such vital services must be under state control. Aside from creating additional funds, there is a long-term problem with privatization in a country like Swordland. Uh, 
I don't see a problem with privatization. It would create additional funds. Uh, you're right. There might be structural issues, especially due to private greed and market manipulation. Uh, what are those problems? People are already lacking proper health care, even though it is free. What happens when you privatize? Price increase as state hospitals close due to sales. We will prevent the worst case scenarios, says Mr. Benowalt. There needs to be healthy structural improvements in this sector. This is not Arcasia or, or Lesbia. You are talking about Swordland, in which the healthcare is free for now. We have people who have their lives depending on a service that is free to them. Messing with that structure will definitely hurt us politically in the future. That I know for sure. But the choice is yours, Mr. President. Um, I'm going to go with the privatization. Uh, it does kind of lean towards our free market uh, ideals. And I do believe that the privatization of healthcare, in addition to helping our budget, will also help uh, improve the quality of healthcare. We can turn that money into something useful. I shall let my partners know. I don't think this was the right choice. Too bad, bud. Since we will have extra funds, the spending policy question remains. How are we going to spend our money for health? Uh, what are your suggestions? We should plan on building new hospitals. We could work on increasing the salaries of healthcare workers. And we should focus on improving treatment in our rural areas. Let's see what their suggestions are. We have three options to use the majority of our funds on. We can build new hospitals where needed. We can spend money on increasing salaries for healthcare workers, or we can spend money to improve existing treatment in rural areas. Uh, building new hospitals sounds interesting. It also boosts our popularity. Increasing salaries should have a good effect for doctors, nurses, and other staff who work so hard for our citizens. Uh, improving treatment in rural areas is a must. It would prevent mistreatment, disease, and sickness. That's a legitimate choice right there. Or we could pay our doctors more or build new hospitals. With a polio epidemic on its way, maybe we should be improving services in rural areas. Our rural clinics are old, ill-equipped, and understaffed, which causes a huge urban and rural disparity. It is one of the causes of maternal deaths and other sickness which I want to solve within this term. Reports have shown that minor epidemics are spreading in certain areas due to old facilities with a lack of hygiene and equipment, so it looks like we may have made the right decision. I believe improving treatment in rural areas should be our focus, Mr. President. It would be best to consider the political advantages of each one as well as the practical advantage before making a decision. A few minutes went by in contemplation as the moment to make a decision came near. I'm going to stick with uh, improving the rural treatment and hiring health staff and upgrading equipment in rural areas. New contracts for improvements will be drawn up immediately. That is all, then. Very well. Fruitful meeting, nonetheless. Nice and short. Just the way I like it. Pascal gathers his documents and left along with Lucian. All right. Let's see. So we have... Uh... Person versus Swordland case. A landmark court filing has been appealed to the Court of Appeals today and is under review by the Minister of Justice. Lawyer and Blue civil rights activist Ishval Urson sued the Dyer municipality led by Felix Braun for the infringement of constitutional rights regardless regarding religious expression. The case questions the legality of the Religious Harmony Bill, which just makes a uh, celebrating 
the national religion of Swordland and Swordish uh, law. Um, pissed off the Bloods. But it doesn't really seem like there's much that doesn't. So, uh, the Wayland Border Report. Chief of the Armed Forces, Vulcan Kruger, reported that the we Wezek Armed Forces are moving north towards the town of Vernon, which is right here, right on our border. On their way, many Bluish villages were assaulted, and the initial reports indicate a high death toll. As they are approaching closer to the border, Wezek army movements will be observed closely. Many displaced refugees from the battles have been seen moving towards the Swordish border. They have been turned around forcibly to ensure the complete defense of the border. Uh, we've got this here. Let's see what the uh, newspaper says for now. Real threat to public health care. There we go. Reports are coming in that the Reign administration has decided on privatization of the Swordish health system. If this happens, it would be one of the biggest mistakes of Reign's presidency. Thousands of Swordland's rural citizens already lack access to affordable health care with clinics and hospitals in the hands of greedy corporations. This gap would enlarge even further. But I'm building... I'm working on improving rural health care. You know. And they stand with the uh, Ishavel Erson in his court case. Uh, let's see what The Economist says. Government's iron grip on health ends. The administration has decided privatization will be allowed in the health system. We've seen what state-run health care has to offer. Long wait times, outdated equipment... Doctors who care more about stamping their time cards than serving patients. Analysis at analyst, try again. Analyst at the Economist have run the numbers. We've got nothing to lose by allowing reasonable privatization, by allowing the companies to take the reins, and everything to gain. More competition, better services, and greater incentive for medical innovation. The state can't fill all gaps of systems, and therefore the market should aid in these efforts. President Rain is walking on the path of reason. Few thousands protest the new governor of Helgeland. Uh-oh. Thousands in Helgeport took to the streets to protest the Agnolian government's increased control over Helgeland's administration following the appointment of a new governor. Demonstrators protested the Agnolian government's decision to appoint a governor from the Agnolian mainland without holding any local elections on the island. That is kind of bogus. Logslandian leader, Chancellor Hagel, was quick to condemn the decision. Majority of the residents of the island still claim Vogg heritage or have Vogslandian ancestry. Experts say the increased tension between Agnolia and Vogsland prompted the Agnolian authorities to make this decision with an aim to increase their control over the island. All right, so... That's the news of the day. Uh, we've got a meeting with Mr. Franz Richter on the upcoming vote. I'm really very positive about uh, our constitutional reform. So, the preparations for the new constitution were nearly complete. Soon, we were going to propose it to the Grand National Assembly, a huge step for our administration but we desperately needed more support. That's why I invited Franz Richter, who is the uh, leader of the PFJP. He and his party held the key to our success. We met in the presidential office at the end of the day. He arrived in his signature navy blue suit and handed me a box of famous Arcasian chocolates before settling down on the couch. Uh, let's see. It's good to have you here, Mr. Richter, and thank you for the gift. We'll go with that one. Uh, there's been rumors that he is uh, bought and paid for by the Arcasians, so that third option was kind of a snarky little hit at him because of that. Uh, I took a folder from his briefcase and flipped it open. 
I could see the scribbles he'd made in the margins on my draft proposal. I have to say, I am surprised by this proposal you have prepared for the new constitution. I really do not understand your reasoning behind some of the changes. I think thought you were with me on this. Uh, what parts don't you understand? Don't get me wrong, I like your draft, as I've already stated. I'm just shocked you listened to our demands. Oh, well, he's surprised in a good way. Decreasing the electoral threshold and the term limits, that's more than we hoped for. How does the USB feel about that, Mr. President? USB is my party. They're not too happy. At least the old guard is. The uh, reformists are... I think the reformists have my back on this one. <clears throat> is this political suicide, or did you actually manage to get the party behind your changes? Uh, well, the party listens to what I say, which they don't. The USP is in agreement, which they are not. But I guess I could lie to them. Or I could be a dick. We'll go with this one. I'll lie to him. Mrs. Tory didn't seem to be extremely enthusiastic about the new constitution. Are you sure you have all the votes needed? I believe the Chief Justice has her ear, and the Old Guard is doing their best to make sure you fail. Are you aware the Old Guard has been reaching out even to PFJP members? I hope you're doing something to contain this mess. Well, I didn't even know about it, so... Uh, who would have thought? Of course they are, but we shouldn't worry. So you have a plan? <clears throat> but even if the changes pass in the Assembly, how are you going to get such an anti solace proposal past the Supreme Court? Uh, we have a few connections on the inside. I'm going to handle that. Trust me, the justices care about money more than anything else. If we unite, to unite together, they will be forced to support us. I like that option. I don't want to quite reveal that I do actually have connections on the inside of the Supreme Court to the uh, opposing party. So, lock arms, brother. I'm not so sure about that. A few justices will sympathize with us, but the ultimate decision will be up to the centrist, and Orso has them locked up. If we're doing this, we have to make it count. I hope that you will succeed, Mr. Rain. I respect what you've done inside the USP. I will do my best to flip the Supreme Court as well. You can count on the PFJP's votes, which is fantastic. I just want your promise that you will give us proper credit and finally do something about the unbalanced representation of our party on the state television. For decades, your party has been doing whatever it could to stay in power while keeping the PFJP silenced. If we're to be on the same side, I expect you to finally acknowledge all the wrongs that have been done and act against the soulless state apparatus in full force. Okay, of course, we're in this together. Of course, I can't deny my party's disreputable actions. <clears throat> Ooh, hell yeah. Uh, I can't deny my party's disreputable actions. I respect your honesty, Mr. President. I hope I can rely on you in the upcoming vote. We expect the USP to rally behind your proposal. Uh-oh. I can sh assure you, you'll have the PFJP's full support. Uh, I'm happy to cooperate with you, Mr. Richter. I... Well, I hope we can get uh, enough of the reformists on our side here. Uh, was there anything else? Uh, before you leave, I'd like to address a few things I've heard about you. Talking about his uh, love affair with the Arcasians. We'll leave that. We'll leave that be for now. We need his help. Don't want to piss him off. It's nice to have a president that we can finally have a dialogue with. He laughed. I'll see you in the history books. Have a nice evening. Sweet. Well, that didn't go too bad. Um, scrolling around the country. Nothing to attend to. What's this? Uh, read the report from Whole Sword. Or a... Ooh, we get to award the uh, contract for the 
new investment project. Let's read the report from Holesword first. At yesterday's party conference of the PFJP, Franz Richter announced that he will be giving his full support to the constitutional changes proposed by the USB. He asked the members of his party to follow him in this endeavor and set aside their differences for the greater good of the country. Fantastic. Uh, let's award the contract. Uh, the SSC, Underhaul Construction, and Taurus Holding Companies have put forward their bids in the hope of winning the government contract. Our budget went up to zero. Now it's going to go back down to negative one. Uh, the, the new ambitious investment project, which company should we pick to lead? Uh, Underhaul did fairly well with the highway project, although Taurus Holdings... Um, our buddy Franz over there from the uh, PFJP is kind of tied to them. So if we give the contract to them, maybe it would benefit. Well, he's already given us his support, and I'm uh, I'm okay with Underhaul taking this up again. Oh, uh, we got lots of stuff to attend to now. Let's take a look at what they are. Updates on the situation of education. And a call from Gus Manger. I wonder what that could be about. Rain meets Richter. Swordland today has received an exclusive update about President Rain's constitutional reform process. According to our inside sources, Rain's Rain met with PFJP had Franz Richter in an attempt to secure the party's votes in the Assembly. This meeting could be an indication that the President is truly aiming for democratic reform as opposed to paying lip service or using the opportunity to consolidate his own power. We will know more once the result of the meeting is announced. And the Lockhaven Times, Richter backs Reigns reforms. Uh, seems to be pretty good news, except for, uh, this right here. Despite a complete show of support from the PFJP members, the group's deputy chairwoman, Mrs. Sue Heil, that's her, protested Richter's calls for bipartisanship and blamed the party leadership for handing Swordland to President Rain on a silver platter. She was seen leaving the meeting during Richter's speech in protest. Well, fuck her. Uh, let's take a call from Gus Ranger. Manger. The sun was setting over Holsorn. I was in my office working on the preliminary details that Kira had sent over about the curriculum. The phone rang and I picked it up. <clears throat> Mr. President. What is it? Mr. Manger is on the line, sir. He said it's about an investment. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'm going to be making some money here. A momentary crackling noise indicated the line changed. Uh, Mr. Manger, to what do I owe the pleasure? I hope you have some good news. It's the president speaking. As your secretary might have informed you, I'm calling about what we discussed at the party. I am honestly very glad that I decided to attend Mr. Vice President's little gathering. Uh, we went to a party at um, Peter Vectern's house. He's my drunk vice president. And uh, he told us about some investment opportunities that will benefit my own personal wealth. A very enjoyable party turned out to be an even more enjoyable with the actual results out of it. <clears throat> Let's hear the results. Well then, I'm ha very happy to inform you that your investment to procure the vineyard in Erloy has been accepted by the current resident. Oh yeah, I bought a vineyard. You are now the owner of a lovely vineyard, a beautiful, beautiful villa, and a sizable land. As I mentioned before, there might be some costs related to refurbishing the wine making equipment. However, the facilities are there. I will have the deed and keys sent to you immediately. Congratulations are in order, Mr. President. I'm glad we went to that party. 
See, I told you. I'm lo <coughs> excuse me. I'm looking forward to more successful ventures we might do together in the future. Thank you for your time. Good evening. I, I could have said, uh, let me know if there's any other investment opportunities, but I think it might be kind of time to uh, curb my enthusiasm for my own personal wealth here. <clears throat> All right, personal wealth increased. What's this? Okay, it's the education. So nothing else to attend to except for that. No newspaper articles to read. We are one richer. We awarded the contract to good old underhaul construction for the port. Uh, we started privatizing our healthcare system. I think it was a pretty good episode, and this is where we're going to call it to a close. Uh, anyway, if you liked the episode, hit that like button. I'm liking how the story's playing out so far. I hope uh, our decisions lead to some uh, good results in terms of our economy here. But like I said, if you liked the episode, help my channel and my series out a little bit. Hit that like button, leave your thoughts in the uh, comments below. Comment section for this game has been kind of dead. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, if you guys are not enjoying the uh, game. Or me reading it to you. But I'm enjoying playing it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you'd like to follow along with President Rain. I'd like to have you. The more the merrier. President Rain would like to have you. And we will uh, chart the course of Swordland together. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching. And have yourself a very good night.